You know, Ron, uh, I'm writing a book, uh, I've written a book, uh, talking about the future of the conservative movement, and I tried to go back to figure out when the big mess began that <laughs> led to this collapse. And there were a few people, Peter Wallison at uh, AEI, uh, and even the New York Times article that was written in 1999 warning about F Freddie and Fanny. Uh, a lot of warnings out there. Alan Greenspan also issued warnings. But I was stunned by reading a statement you made in the Banking Committee uh, yes. on September 10th, 2003. In fact, I reprinted the whole thing in my book. I want, to, I want Americans who hear leaders saying every day, we could have never seen this coming. This was a shock. How did this happen? I want to read what you said five years hmm. before the collapse. The special privileges granted to Fannie and Freddie have distorted the housing market by allowing them to attract capital that they could not attract under pure market conditions. Like all artificially created bubbles, the boom in housing prices cannot last forever. When housing prices fall, homeowners will experience difficulty as their equity is wiped out. Furthermore, the holders of the mortgage debt will also have a loss. These losses will be greater than they would have otherwise been had government policy not actively encouraged overinvesting in housing. And you go on to oh say because God. so many people will invest in housing, the damage will be catastrophic. Congressman, how could it be that you knew this on the banking committee in 2003 and nobody else did until after the collapse? Well, I, w I would think the easiest explanation is is uh, Washington, D.C. is permeated by Keynesian economic thinking. Very few even know the name Austrian economics and understand the business cycle. I was concerned about the building of the bubble since 1971 when gold uh, was dealing from the dollar. So since that time, the bubble has been gradually being inflated, but it got out of hand in the 1990s as well as after 2000, Bernanke taking interest rates down to 1%. To me, uh, the biggest surprise was, although I was very concerned in 2003, I was concerned before that, I'm surprised it lasted to 2007. That's when the bubble really burst. But it was amazing how long it lasts. And to me, the more amazing thing right now is not only has the financial system collapsed, which is very, very bad and very dangerous, I believe that what we're moving toward now is the collapse of the dollar. And the collapse of a dollar, because it's the international reserve currency, I think is going to be much worse than what we have already witnessed. Can you all believe yeah, his prediction is, in mean, 2003? Prophetic. Absolutely. Talking prophetic. to everybody on the banking committee, telling them, hey, we're in trouble. Let's not go this direction. Right. Or we're going to be in trouble. And then, you know, um, Ron, uh, somebody that probably didn't vote for you. Uh, Columbia economist Jeffrey Sachs uh, came on this show and said what we're doing now with these economic policies is rebuilding another bubble uh, yeah, and creating debt, more debt. Well, well, they're trying, but they're, they're going to have a d difficult time uh, reinflating re the bubble. To me, what is disturbing is those individuals who did not predict what was to come are now predicting that the, uh, that the downturn has, has ended. It's over. At the end of the year, we're going to have growth. They're still listening to, to the Bernankes uh, of the world. And yet, they were completely wrong before. Greenspan was wrong. Bernanke was wrong. But all of a sudden, oh, I know, the end has come that we, we got into our trouble by spending too much, borrowing too much, and inflating too much, and now that's all they're doing, and now they're predicted, and they have given credibility of knowing how to predict the end well, of this downturn. Ron, that's to be astounding. Hey, Ron, not only that, the very people that sat in your committee when you told them what was going to happen remained silent. And in fact, some accusing you and other Republicans that were critical of Fannie and Freddie of being racists who hated poor people, those very people that missed all the warning signs were then put in charge of the trillion dollar rescue. But, but Joe, you got to you got to give them a, a little bit of credibility here on this argument because you know I was still on the fringe back in 2003. Nobody cared what I was saying. Now, now at least I have 100 or 200 people who care, so I'm getting a little bit more attention. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it isn't so much me. Uh, I'm just reciting what I've learned by studying free market economics, and and we haven't had free market economics. Now they're blaming capitalism for all these problems and not enough regulation. We've had crony capitalism. We've had 
inflationism, corporatism, big government. We've had no, we've not had true free market capitalism. So we have to define it. Somebody asked me once, who is the, who, what individual is the cause this problem? I would put it all on the shoulders of Keynes. <laughs> you know, he's, it's a long time since he's been around, but Keynesianism exists. Remember what Nixon told us? We're all Keynesians now. That was when the last link of the dollar to gold was removed. And since that time, we've had nothing more, more than these bubbles and big government, but it is coming to an end. We can't yeah. afford uh, this foreign policy or these bailouts any longer. Exactly. Carlos, we, we, are, we, are, we are out of money. We've yeah. got to show restraint at home and restraint overseas. Carlos,